coming up in Jamaica Magazine, engaging volunteers in the care and protection of our children. We want persons who are so trained to give off their time to help the children. Plus, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is a behavior disorder and its core symptoms are inattention, hyperactivity and impulsivity. We also talk health and money matters. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Welcome. Labor Day 2016. For health's sake, keep it clean. Join the cleanup efforts in your community on Labor Day and help to keep the mosquitoes away. Over 1 million people die each year from mosquito-borne diseases worldwide. So destroy all mosquitoes in the gullies, drains, and around your homes. Let's clean up our public spaces and beautify our environment. Register your projects now. Call 978-7654 or email laborday at mcges.gov.jm. Keep it clean. Good day, I'm Tamar McHale and this is your GIS News for Thursday, May 19. Jamaica and the World Bank will be working together on new innovative financing initiatives, including a debt for nature and resilience swap and a policy-based guarantee. A new project will also be developed to support credit to small and medium enterprises. That was revealed in a joint statement following wide-ranging discussions between Prime Minister Andrew Holness and World Bank Vice President Orhe Familiar in Montego Bay yesterday. The discussions took place on the outskirts of the 46th annual meeting of the Caribbean Development Bank, CDB. Prime Minister Holness and Mr. Familiar discussed the possibility of using budget support in the form of a policy-based guarantee to leverage additional funding from the market. The World Bank's Vice President also congratulated Jamaica for its commitment to good macroeconomic policies and expressed his conviction that, with continued reforms, Jamaica was on the right path for accelerating growth. As part of its country partnership strategy, the World Bank is providing 510 million US dollars between 2013 and 2017 to support Jamaica in changing its growth trajectory and boosting private sector development and competitiveness. In the meantime, Prime Minister Andrew Holness has called on the Caribbean Development Bank to help regional countries pursue policies to reduce debt while growing the economy. The Prime Minister was speaking on Wednesday at the opening ceremony for the CDB's 46th annual meeting in Montego Bay. Finance Minister Audley Shaw says Caribbean countries should take advantage of the relatively low world oil prices to implement meaningful reforms in the energy sector, which will increase their economy's resilience to oil price shocks. He asserts that now is the time to intensify plans to diversify the energy mix. The Finance Minister was also addressing the CDB Board of Governors meeting in Montego Bay. Special Representative of the United Nations Secretary General Rachel Kite, who is also attending the Montego Bay meeting, has commended Jamaica for diversifying its energy mix to include wind, solar and liquefied natural gas. Ms. Kite, who is also the CEO of Sustainable Energy for All, outlined one of the main things that Caribbean countries could do to have a reliable energy sector. It requires the right kinds of institutions, transparent, well-managed, well-governed institutions. Without them, it will slow things down. While addressing the William de Mass lecture at the function, Ms. Kite reiterated the need to secure clean, reliable and affordable energy to combat climate change and poverty. And finally, government is urging greater regional cooperation to address common border security challenges. The urging came at the opening of the Caribbean Customs Law Enforcement Council's 38th annual conference earlier this week. The government of Jamaica is firmly committed to working with our regional and international partners to fight these threats and to protect our citizens and the country from this growing threat of transnational crime, especially the trafficking of, trafficking of guns, illicit drugs, and indeed money. We have an array of challenges to our shared security. However, we must remain resolute in our efforts as no nation is immune to the challenges of globalization. And in today's world, solving them requires collective action. 
The five-day CCLEC conference, which is being hosted by the Jamaica Customs Agency, concludes on May 20. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Tamar McHale. Thanks for watching. The government's tax relief will benefit more than 250,000 people who pay income tax. The tax threshold will be moved from $592,800 to $1 million on July 1, 2016 and to $1.5 million on April 1, 2017. The Government of Jamaica, building a partnership for economic growth and prosperity. Building a network of volunteers to offer assistance to children in state care is an initiative of the Child Development Agency called CDA Cares. The aim is to pool resources such as skills and donations and make them readily available to homes across the island. Here's more on how you can get involved. Are you into volunteering? Would you like to give back to society? More specifically, are you interested in giving your time and resources to a child in a state home? If the answer to these questions is yes, then this initiative by the Child Development Agency, dubbed CDA Cares, is for you. The program began rolling out in May 2016. This is a voluntary corp that we are soliciting help from the general public spearheaded by our own CD officers, not necessarily children's officers, but other officers in the administrative areas who don't interact and interface directly with the children. And so the idea here is that we would have persons apply and be registered and certified as volunteers so that they can go into our children's homes. The Volunteer Corps will reach out and offer their services to wards of state in areas such as counseling aid. There's a lot of cases for counselling, for example. So the child doesn't necessarily have to go into a residential facility, but just needs some counselling support. So it could be a doctor who could volunteer to give medical assistance. It could be a psychologist or a counsellor who could give some counselling support. And so we want to develop that volunteer um, pool so that our facilities, our children can benefit. You have trained professionals in the, t in the school system, for example, who are not working in that area. Can we get some sessionals with them? Can you give two hours after? So this is what the volunteer protocol is about. We want persons who are so trained to give off their time to help the children. The CDA CARES initiative is formalizing outreach activities undertaken by various organizations, groups and individuals who take part in outreach activities in these homes. We have a lot of volunteers who go into the homes. You have some persons who will give donations. So if we have 50 homes, can we get 50 companies to adopt each of them? And you know, there are youngsters there who might need support for tertiary, or we get a lot of scholarships from private sector. To, to assist our students, meaningful ways like that. So you might have volunteers here at the JIS who would want to partner to go into Mount Olivet, because I know you do Mount Olivet. So the idea is that we want to register and train them. This training will be organized across the island, so interested persons can come on board. As part of the program, the CDA is also embarking on a Profiles of Children Homes initiative. To come up with their needs list. What are the priorities for this home? So there's a Mount Olivet, there's a homestead. What are the major priorities so that we don't have duplication of efforts? So we can target. People call us, child month people call us, what can we do? So if we have that profile and we know what the homes need, then we can properly direct persons to give the assistance there. So what's in the criteria to be a part of this volunteer corps? They must get a police record, for example. You know, you must get a reference from a reputable person, Minister of Religion, JP, so that we know you and somebody else can vote that you can work with children. The spirit of volunteerism is really active in the country and we just need to maximize those benefits for the children. If you're interested, simply visit the CDA website to get an application. 
You may also contact them at 948-28412. Get on board and volunteer with the CDA. Show a child that you care. My name is Adrian Carlo, double silver medalist in primary school champs, and you're watching Jamaica Magazine. for CSEC exams? Visit EL Jam's virtual learning environment for free study notes, videos, and quizzes in 11 subjects. www.elearnjavle.org We shift our discussion now from caring for children in state care to those generally in the education sector. The Ministry of Education helps us to understand the children with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and how to facilitate them in the school system. Welcome to our discussion on Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. With me is Education Officer in the Special Education Unit in the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, Mrs. Christina Addington. Welcome, Mrs. Addington. Thanks for having me. The Ministry has established a student support team to assist students that are diagnosed with ADHD, as well as providing a learning environment tailored to their needs. What exactly is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder? Well, Andrew, as stated in the name, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder is a behavior disorder, and its core symptoms are inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. The disorder, for some unknown reason, is more prevalent in boys than girls. Um, and the disorder is a common disorder, and we have up to 10% of the children being diagnosed as having attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So how does it manifest itself? With students who are diagnosed with this disorder, we find that their inattention causes them in the classroom to not maintain focus for long periods of time. They are often daydreaming. Their hyperactivity causes them to be what they call restless, always fidgeting, squirming, can't sit down, impulsivity. They are the ones who are always blurting out the answers, can't wait to take their turns, and you know, always getting into little squabbles because of the impulsivity. They tend to act and then think about it after. So how does ADHD affect the student's ability to learn? Based on some of the characteristic features which I said, um, we know that it is normal, normal child development um, allows for the children to be very active and not sitting down. But when it is chronic and when it is affecting their academic life and their social life, then they're usually referred for a diagnosis to be made. So if the inattention is um, way more than is expected for the level of the child's development, we don't expect a three-year-old to sit down for 20 minutes, but a 10-year-old should be able to sit down for 20 minutes. So, you know, we look at child development and see what is atypical about the development, and then the children are referred because we see the signals they're referred for a diagnosis to be made. How is a diagnosis made of ADHD? For a diagnosis to be made, what happens? The diagnosis is made by a medical practitioner or a psychologist. Um, it, it is not a single test that is done, but a number of rating scales are done, are administered, and important to note is the fact that information is gained from both the academic setting, that's the school, and the social setting, so the home. So information is gained, um, is analyzed based on the scores from the checklist, then the diagnosis is made. Uh, it's important to note, as I said, that for the child to be diagnosed, the behaviors have to be observed across the settings. So it can't be that it's just um, being experienced at home, 
and not in school or at school and not at home. It has to be evident across the settings before a diagnosis, a concrete diagnosis is made. Do the, the parents come in? For the most part, yes. Um, we embrace an inclusive approach to education. However, we find that with certain disabilities, if they are severe, then the children are not in the regular system, but they are in a special ed institution. Um, most children with attention de deficit hyperactivity disorder they are educated in the mainstream. And so what happens is um, through the special education unit and the special needs coordinators in the regions, we go out and we do presentations at schools. We also work with parents. So we work with the PTAs, we make presentations, we help parents to understand how is it that I can better help my child at home to cope and to be a success. Um, also, very importantly, as it relates to national examinations, if the relevant information is sent in, the documentation is sent in with registration for all national exams, accommodations are granted to children diagnosed with ADHD. So we grant accommodations ranging anywhere from extra time to preferential seating, to a prompter, depending on the severity of the, the diagnosis. And the extra time is a standard of 15 minutes, um, additional per hour that is given for the children. Preferential seating may be that the child is placed at the front of the room so that the invigilator, having noted on the paper that the child has a challenge, is able to give an eye to ensure that the child is kept on task. In more severe diagnoses, the child is assigned a prompter and the responsibility of that prompter is solely to keep the child on task. So if the child is daydreaming or wandering, wandering off in his mind, just a gentle tap or nudge to help the child refocus. Mrs. Christina Addington from the Special Education Unit in the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information shared some vital information with us on how to effectively deal with children who are diagnosed with ADHD. And we want to thank her for joining us today. Thank you, Mrs. Addington. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. And until next time, see you around. In Jamaica Magazine. Happy Child Month! Nutritious food, succulent dishes, superior workmanship, and excellent service. Jamaica is on the go. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Let's harness the indomitable spirit of our most valued resource, our people. Let's support our local businesses. After all, buying Jamaica means building Jamaica. Up next, the Financial Services Commission talks about microfinancing. Welcome to the FSC Minute. Today, we'll be talking about microinsurance. Insurance provides a financial safety net which exists to protect us against the risk of financial loss arising from an event such as a hurricane, an accident, illness, and even death. I know that when many of us think about insurance, we think about having to find a lot of money to pay premiums. But microinsurance is different in several ways. Micro means small. It deals with small payments, so it is affordable, accessible, and easy to understand. That means that all Jamaicans, including you, will be able to access more affordable insurance. So how does microinsurance work? Just like traditional insurance, people contribute to a common fund. If one person suffers a loss that is covered by the insurance policy, that person or their beneficiary will receive a payout based on the applicable benefits of the policy. Microinsurance will cover the things that matter to you, your life, your health, and your means of earning an income. Are you insured? Visit or talk to someone from a registered insurance institution to learn more about getting started.
Know your numbers and control the keys to a healthier heart. Know the numbers for your blood pressure, cholesterol level, blood glucose level, and your weight and body mass index. Give yourself a fighting chance. Find out the risks they represent and what you need to do to stay healthy. Talk to your doctor and start making healthy lifestyle choices to prevent a heart attack or stroke. National Fibroid Awareness Week is being observed from Sunday, May 15 to Saturday, May 21. The theme is Caribbean women addressing uterine fibroids. Get informed. Know your options. Tell a friend. Information will be shared at a public seminar this Saturday at the Jamaica College Auditorium in Kingston. In the meantime, the JIS shares this with you. I am a gynecologist, but I'm also a husband and a father to three daughters. Uterine fibroids are extremely common and can cause a devastating effect on a woman's life. Heavy, painful periods with anemia, fatigue, and loss of productivity. These are some of the problems associated with uterine fibroids. For years, I had uterine fibroids. In fact, my tummy went from supermodel flat to resembling that of a six-month pregnant woman. I took control though and got treated. I'm a housekeeper. I never thought it would happen to me. Then I found out that my dear sister has it. It doesn't matter where you come from. Don't sit and do nothing. Uterine fibroids are not just a woman's issue. As a Jamaican male and gynecologist, I empathize with my patients who struggle constantly with the symptoms of uterine fibroids. I encourage Jamaican men to be more compassionate Speak to the women in your lives. I assume that fibroids only affected women in their late 30s and older. Until I met a woman that was doing her second surgery. She was only 26. Uterine fibroids affect women of all ages. When a working woman has a myomectomy, she may be away from work for several weeks. Her insurance may not pay for her surgery. This is the reality of thousands of women and their families. We are friends and colleagues with many of them. I'm a relationship coach and I had uterine fibroids. Now fibroids can negatively affect a woman's self-confidence. It can cause painful sexual intercourse and it can destroy the intimacy in your relationship. But there's hope, there is help. Uterine fibroids are a major health issue affecting the Caribbean woman. Caribbean woman addressing uterine fibroids is a national educational campaign aimed at informing and empowering all our women who may now have or may develop fibroids in the future. The Graham Society endorses this event and encourages all, including my colleagues, to get on board. Did you know regular physical activity controls your weight? reduces your risk of cardiovascular diseases, reduces your risk for type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome, reduces your risk of some cancers, strengthens your bones and muscles, and increases your chance of living longer. Get active, get fit, stay healthy. Was the liquor talking not me underage drinking is a serious matter risks include death serious injuries impaired judgment brain development problems and more let's all play our part and ensure that no child under the age of 18 is consuming alcohol let's put a stop to underage drinking we are in the business of prevention let us all ensure that we're partnering to stop our children from consuming alcohol. I said, be careful what you teach your little children. Make sure I know something to hurt them. Mind what you're saying to my sister. She could be the next prime minister. Children in Jamaica constitute anyone who is under the age of 18 years. 
And so once you have a child who is under your care and supervision, we encourage you at the Office of the Children's Advocate to always know where your children are. It doesn't mean that you have to be there with them, but you certainly know who they're with, where they're going, and the purpose for being there. This is a key component in helping to establish some rules in terms of some ground rules and helping to guide your children towards responsible and sensible choices and also assisting you if something were to go wrong to know what is the first point of contact to assist your child. While you're not to look at everybody as a potential suspect, that you need to be very wary of adults, whether they're in positions of authority or not, that seek to want to have a very close relationship with your child. Somebody who wants to invite your child on an outing and it's just that adult and your child alone. Somebody who wants to take your child to a very special event to reward the child perhaps for some performance that the child would have done in an extracurricular activity or for academic uh, excellence. We encourage you to look at these situations very carefully and to determine whether or not it's an appropriate meeting or outing that this person is propositioning for your child. If you are enrolling your child in a daycare, ensure that you know something about the track record of that daycare. Ensure that the daycare has what we call an open door policy, which allows you to go in, see what's happening, observe how the workers there interact with the children, and know some of the ground rules that guide these interactions. If they're going on outings, whether it be school trips or otherwise, ensure that at some point, if, even if you can't go to all, you do attend some of them. So you get yourself integrated into the system and the culture of the school. For these tips, and of course, any other information that deals with children, that is anyone under 18 years, please feel free to contact the Office of the Children's Advocate we're at 72 Harbour Street, downtown Kingston, and our numbers are 948-1134, our website www.oca.gov.jm. Watch what you teach your little children, make sure I know something to hurt them. Mind what you say to me sister, cause she could be the next prime minister. Before we close the show, a reminder for you to visit the CDA website, cda.gov.jm, or call them at 948-2841-2 to get involved in the CDA Cares Initiative. Another Jamaica magazine comes your way tomorrow, but in the meantime, stay informed via our website, gis.gov.jm, and keep sending your feedback to jamaicamagazine at gis.gov.jm or tweet at GIS News. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.